Yo ho ho guys, I know Thursdays are my hyper days, but I forgot to upload this yesterday, which was Thursday, so I'm doing it now. Um, anyway, before I get into this actual item guide and skill set tutorial thing, what have you, I want to make a disclaimer at the very beginning of this video. These videos are made, made as a stepping stone, and typically I put that in text somewhere, but I want to say it out loud. The way I build, the way I play, and the way I use the skills are not the only way to play and I don't make these videos to tell you guys it's my way or the highway I make these videos for y'all to get kind of adjusted to the hyper if you've never played them see what works for you try the build out if it doesn't work for you change it up play the hyper in the way that works best for you and build the hyper in the way that works best for you if that's a hyper you really want to get good with then definitely this is just a way to get your feet wet so to speak so you can get in there and start swimming properly anyway as always we're gonna bump that level up and now let's get into it we're gonna do a tutorial guide for captain red as you can see here plainly by you know the guys running back and forth now um i would have preferred if we had the sentai you know little, little power ranger looking guy but this this works because i still like this skin and i really like um i really like the dragon force one as well but let's get into the real meat of the oh let's oh 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 look at the look at them anyway so his pass is special force he generates one courage charge every eight seconds courage charge is are automatically used in skills to summon captain squad mates charge time is reduced by two seconds on regular hit max charges are two charge time only effect is only affected by unique equipment i do not have that equipment on him but there is one that does change the charge time stats and i do believe it gives you another charge so it's q captain's pistol fires a Fires the captain's pistol doing your applicable damage based on your damage ratios on your items. And if you do have the charge up, you have a squad mate that comes out and blasts a fool with his pistol as well. Doing additional damage and reducing the enemy's movement speed by 40% for 3 seconds. The captain's shield. That's what we're going to call it because I don't know how to pronounce that word. I'm not embarrassing myself. Okay, good. Alright, so he bashes the enemy with the shield doing 97 or whatever your applicable damage is based on your items, stunning them twice. Now, I want to make sure you're aware of that. He does stun them twice. This attack moves quickly, so you may not see it at first, but after you use it enough times, you do see it. Now, if you do have the passive active on the skill when used, when used, your squad mate descends down from the heavens with its own shield and crushes the enemy, doing a down. Basically, it drops them down, so you have two stuns and a down for 1.2 seconds. It's pretty gosh darn ridiculous. His E, Heart of Courage. Captain Red calls upon his team's courage, gaining the following effects for 3 seconds. Damage to enemies, an additional 10%. Damage from enemies is reduced by 10%. Now, if you have the Special Force Reinforcements passive active, all it, it ignores all restrictions and interference effects except for grapple. My god, pay attention to that. You can be grabbed, homie. If Sonya comes at you, you can be grabbed. If Perseus comes at you, you can be grabbed, and you're probably going to go flying in one direction or the other. Anybody with a grapple can yank you, okay? Just because you have that buff going does not mean you, can be, you cannot be yanked. You will, get, you will get shook up, all right? Please keep that in your head. His A, Captain's Blade. The homeboy swings his blade. He swings... <laughs> He swings the captain's blade doing your applicable damage based on your item set and your level actually and squad mate uh, squad mate if you have the passive up comes out and delivers another attack doing an additional set of damage now that's the only one that's a little wonky in my opinion and i'm going to show you at first with the passive active because your squad mate comes out and slides past your target and and hits them so it's kind of awkward landing that but you're always going to land it and unlike tay which is the reason why I put you in here, buddy. I'm sorry. But unlike Tay, um, when you activate your your skills, in order for the squad mate to pop out, you don't have to hit them. So you can completely miss them with your first set, uh, your first skill, and the squad mate will still appear, at least on the A and the Q. On the W, I do believe you still have to hit them. Let's test that in a second. But let's. I'm going to show you his A. All right, so check it out. There's his A. Now, they st Tay still got hit by the squad mate, but the squad mate went way past him. And the ta the hit doesn't count when he slides past him. It's when he swings his blade. Alright. Yeah, okay, so for the W, which I just showed you, you do have to hit him for the squad mate to appear on that. Because otherwise, 
it doesn't do the second hit. Squad mate appears on the second hit of the W. But as you can see, it's one stun, two stun down. One stun, two stun down. One stun, two stun down. Now the reason they do that, I understand, is because if they didn't stun them with those, they could just get out of the way of the down. So the stun's just there to get them down. That's his W with squad mate active. Q, the slow is there, and you could always tell when it's slowed by the animation by their feet. Yeah. So um, then there's his buff. All right. Now the buff is the only thing that can be used elsewhere. It can be used on the ladder. Heck, it can even be used in the middle of the, in the middle of the air. Doesn't matter. Now his R. I didn't go over that, but I'm gonna tell you what it is before I show you. Special force assembles to fire a special force Vulcan, continuously doing an applicable damage based on your skill level and item build, and reducing the enemy movement speed by 70% for one second. That's a huge. Huge movement speed reduction, and that's like the the bare bones of your ultimate or your R skill. Um, and I say that because the slow is insane. Seventy percent move speed reduction is insane, dude. Even if you don't kill him with your ultimate, odds are someone on your team is going to because they can't get away. They cannot get away. Like yo, they can't get away. All right, they're just not unless they're caught at the very tip of it. They may be able to get away. But as long as your team reacts fast enough and you're not the only one they're fighting, they're not going to. Anywho, now here's the thing. You gotta match the indicated keys to determine the number of times Special Force Vulcan hits. I don't know if it was different before, like in the Korean version where the keys were different, but it's always gonna be the R key. So whenever you, you use your ultimate. Also, there's no passive increase on this. This passive over here does nothing for this because he summons all his squad mates. There's no additional squad mate to summon after that. Anyway. So when you do your ultimate, that's how it looks. And there, that bar up there is just like Lewis's. So instead of hitting my standard attack button S though, I would do this and I would hit R. Now, it does take a little bit getting used to to try and get it built up, but the item I use on him, his unique, actually reduces that. So I'm gonna go over like a few little things you can do with, uh, with Homeboy right here. And I wanna show you all this. So watch the number two on my passive right by my Q, um, right down here. I want to show you how quickly you actually built this up. So I'm going to use both of these and then just hit. I already have one. So essentially in two standard attack combos, you get both of those back. You get both of those build ups back. So you can just, you know, keep just jabbing people and you'll be able to get your combos with your skills pretty quickly. Anywho, so just I'm si I'm saying that to say that you can link your your skills together and you should still be able to get your combos or your uh, squad mates to be summoned pretty frequently without um, really running into the situation where you you know you don't have a squad mate to do the additional damage. Well, anyway, there's a lot of things that you can do. Your W opens up a lot of different like a lot of just weird janky combos if you want to put it that way because once they're down, they still take damage. And you can summon squad mates while other squad mates are out. So, W, Q, there you go. That's one combo right out the gate. Of course, you can also E, W, hit them a little bit, hit them with that A, and then Q. Now, the Q has a slow, so it's always, in my opinion, you can either initiate with that, like if they're far away from you, hit them with that slow, get in there, and, and then just keep going ham on them. Or if you want to do the buff because you know you're about to jump into an enemy team, like you're coming off that ladder, you're like, oh no, here we go, the blam! You know, and then just go in on them. Typically, by the time they get up, you're just about having another uh, passive up because you can unload the full combo, your full standard attack combo off of your W. So you just about have another one ready. So if they get up and they start, they dash away, you can be like, oh no, sir, Q, and then slow them down again. But I do want you to notice the range on his uh, squad mate is l is lower than yours. But um, that's only I'm not I'm sorry not the range the the range is the same but the contact point is further back. Meaning your bullet hits them first. So if I fire it, it's possible for me to hit them with my bullet and my squad mate doesn't get the hit. So they don't I don't get the slow. The slow only procs off your squad mate, not you. Let's see if I can show you this real quick. Alright, do this, do this. 
See, he's not slowed because my squad mate didn't hit him. Now, the, again, the, the range, I misspoke a second ago. The range on the Q for your squad mate is the same, but when it hits is different. There is like a 0.2 second delay on the squad mate's bullet and yours. Very small window, but it's possible for them to dash out of it. Just, just saying. Now, one thing that's really obvious, maybe, after even seeing what, how the skills look, is you can always W into your ultimate. And that slow is just insane. However, when you do that, it gives them the option to dash past you. And if, say, for example, if Tay dashed past me and I didn't have my buff up, I'm going to get bounced all over the freaking place. Um, like, lifted, because you can't do that. In addition to me saying that, in your ultimate, you can be pushed. Say Athena pushes you, it doesn't drop you out of your ultimate. If you, It just kind of like, or from my personal experience, I don't. it didn't drop me out of my ultimate. It just kind of like slid me. And that was it. Now, she can down you, of course, if she does her ultimate, and that will stop your ult. You are still susceptible to CC, so unless you have your passive up, I wouldn't uh, just do it right out the gate against people that can lock you down or grab you, so on and so forth. Like, I wouldn't be all up on, on Perseus' business like this. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to ult him. That's it. Because he'll just grab me and just throw me somewhere. You know what I mean? It's not. It's just not a good thing to do. Anyway, that's like really quick tips on his skills and how to use them, different ways I use them. Um, if you're going into a team fight, definitely try to get your E on, get your buff. It's best if you have your buff um, up before you even get into the team fight. And if you can do it with your squad mate, because again, you can do it on the ladder and they just float in, in the air because they're freaking angels or something, I don't know. But it, it helps. Now, we're going to go into the item build. Again, this is my the way I play him. I'm probably going to change this up a little bit. Um, with the shock knuckles and the exo frame, but we'll see right now This is what I've been using and this has been working for me Anyway So slaughter is greaves. It gives life still plus 5% and move speed plus 50 y'all know me by now I put one point into this and then I work on my next item Typically my next item is the GAU 1 Avenger Reason being is because it gives a defense bypass attack and crit rate but in addition to that it reduces the the cooldown on my ultimate by 10 seconds and reduces the damage dispersion across hypers on my ultimate by 50 percent and it, it decreases the amount of key mashes needed on my ultimate by 50 percent so the highest amount of key mashes i need is four and i have the full proc on my ultimate full thing all of it which is actually pretty awesome then Breath of Fire, because you're basically Falcon punching people at that point. Like, I'm just going to put this item in and show it to you. And it's not just because it's aesthetically pleasing, but my god is it pleasing. It's also because it gives you max health and crit damage. And move speed. That move speed is really important because you're slowing them, but you still want to be able to catch them. And it catches people off guard a lot when, you, when you're fast. And they're just like, oh, I thought I was just slowed. No, not just that, buddy. But here we go. We're going to W, and then we're going to Falcon Punch. See what I'm saying? We're going to Q... We're going to go up to him. We're going to Falcon Punch. You know what else we're going to do? We're going to A, and then we're going to Falcon Punch. All right? Then we're going to E. He's going to be like, yo, for the Homeland. Then we're going to Falcon. Well, we're going to miss. Then we're going to Falcon Punch. We're going to do that again. Homeland. Homeland Punch. Okay? Now, um, in addition to that, I also have Dragon's Bone. Or Dragon's Bane, I'm sorry. It's attack and crit rate, but it increases critical damage by additional 20%. So that's freaking dope. If I have this... Plus dragon, uh, Breath of Fire. I almost called it Dragon's Breath. I'm tripping. Anyway, and I'm getting all these crits with that explosive fist. And uh, by the way, after using a skill, your regular attack within 5 seconds inflicts additional 100% of attack damage. So that's basically what that does. I, I'm, I'm repeating that simply because there are people that are seeing these videos that haven't gone back and watched the other ones. So you know what that does. It's not just because it looks cool. It does look cool though. Anyway, so attack, crit rate and then additional 20% crit rate. It's pretty ridiculous. That's a lot of critical damage off of one item. Then we have Shock Knuckles. This is attack, defense, and crit rate. The defense is to have a little bit more sustainability, not just from the life still off my boots, but from having defense. So when I go in, I'm not just like, oh, hey, I'm a squishy son of a gun. I, I don't recommend anyone building glass cannon on anything aside from maybe a striker. And what glass cannon is, for you know, if you don't know, Glass cannon, it simply is a phrase to explain having no defenses. You build straight damage, and you have no defenses. The reason why I say it's kind of okay on, on strikers for the most part 
is because you're keeping distance when fighting, but strikers are considered squishies. What that means is that they're basically they're soft. You can kill them really quick. If you close the distance in them, in on them, you can just kill them. I mean, assassins can kill you quickly, and so can a striker if they have enough damage, but being that they're squishy, if they screw up even a little bit, they're basically dead. And they have no real defenses, unless, of course, they are someone that does put a little defense in their build, which is kind of why I'm doing that with, with Captain Red. Like, he, he's a specialist or what have you, but you're going to get in people's business, and you're likely going to get a lot of kills. You're kind of like an assassin, but he's a specialist, I think, I personally think, due to how unique his kit is with his slows and whatnot, and his squad mates, of course. Then we have the Exo Frame, which is attack and defense again, but it increases max health by 75% of attack and increases max health by 75% of defense. So I'm, I'm also boosting my health up a little bit. Now, mind you, I don't get a huge health boost, but I can show you. I'm going to put all the items on and show you exactly what my health will be at. Now, first thing I'm going to do, though, is give this item. So now that I have this set up, I'm going to show you how easy it is to get the full proc on the old. Like, I'm not even really trying. That's it. And it's doing so much damage because if you notice, and this is also important, you still do crits off each hit from your ult. That's important to notice. You see those crits popping? And I can just walk up to them and punch them. So that's an important thing to note. And that's a good that's another reason why it's good to build crit damage on him, because you again oops, I just forgot to do it that time. Build crit damage off of your uh off of, or you do crit damage off of every, off, not every, but off of your hits. So you can, in fact, crit them with that. That is insane. So we're going to just beef him up. So I didn't even break 3,000 uh, 3, health. I got close, but I didn't break it. So my defense is 108. My move speed is 682. My attack is 284, which isn't too terrible. Um, my max mana is 100. Now, this is kind of a, a mana hungry build because I do run out of mana from time to time using my skills. And again, to, uh, 2878 as far as my health, not 3000. Critical rate is 45% chance, but my crit damage is 170%. My defense bypass is 30, defense penetration is 19, life still is only 10%, but I don't need a whole lot. Uh, my health regen is 120. That's not too that's not too terribly bad. And my mana regen is 30. And that's eh, that's really bare minimum, in my opinion. So those are the stats with the build that I'm using currently and the build that's working for me. And those are my quick tips on um, Captain Red. It's a simple guide. I don't wanna make these too terribly long. I know I've done that in the past before. But you guys have a great day, morning, noon, or night. Get a good yo ho ho in there somewhere. Get on the get on the ship, guys. The Monolith Brook Shadow cruise ship. We're going to be pirates and we're going to take over the net, right? So have uh, get a good cup of coffee, milk, water, tea, whatever it is you're drinking to make your day a little bit better. And I hope to see you guys on the next one. Also look forward to other content coming out. I am going to start doing playthroughs. Uh, Divinity Original Sin 2 is the first one I'm going to try to do. It may not work out because I'm having some issues recording, but we'll see. Anyway, guys, I love y'all. Keep up. We keep on coming and Keep up the support, guys. Y'all have, have made me so happy just by doing this. I, I didn't expect to even get this much of a following. Anyway, y'all, I'll catch you on the next one. Monolith Brook Shadow signing out.